After you downloaded the zip file containing the add-on, go to Edit Preferences, go to Add-ons, make sure the Community tab is selected, Install, find your zip file that you just downloaded, Install Add-on, and you will get this. Here you can activate the add-on, and you will see that on your end panel you have a new tab. Remember, you can bring back this if you don't see it with N. To make an update, you just go to Edit Preferences, go to Add-ons. Even if you have the add-on installed, I recommend to remove and then install the new version, but you can do it uh, like this anyway. You go to Install, select the new version, Install Add-on. You will see a little text here, Model Installed, and that's it. The new version will be installed. To use the add-on, you simply go to the End Panel. Here you have the different categories, for example, fabrics. We go to metals. The first time it will be uh, scanning the, the different materials. And the next time you open, it will be faster. You select a material with your object selected. You click Assign. It will take a, a moment. And then you have your material assigned. All materials have uh, different uh, settings to adjust. Uh, in this case, we can change the pattern, you can change the angle, roughness, bump, etc., the colors. In this case, we have uh, one line different color every eight lines. You can make it every three, for example, every seven. Or if you take the same color and use it on the accent, you will have like this. If you assign this material again to the same object, say you did changes and you want this again, since this this material was already created, it will create a copy uh, that it's called 001. So you have to change it manually in this case, and you will have the original. We have more complex uh, materials like this. Sometimes the, the more complex uh, materials take a bit more time to process, of course, and EV is not that good at processing a lot of uh, nodes. So some, if they are very complex, uh, work better in, in cycles. There are also some uh, cycles only features, for example, to detect the borders in a good way. I, I know that there is a, a way for Eevee, but I don't like the result, so I don't use it. I prefer to, to make materials that look really good in, in, in my case. So I use only features that look okay. Here we have uh, three different ways to to detect the borders for cycles. You can try the, the one that fits better to, to your object. Of course, different objects, different light conditions where will have different results on materials. So uh, you may have to ad adjust the settings depending on your scene. This is very complex. I'm, I'm working on a, on a simplified version because uh, a lot of people don't know what to do to, with this. Sometimes I like to add a lot of features to, to give a lot of freedom to the artist, but uh, it can be a bit too much for, for people that it's just uh, starting with this. So I will make uh, another version that you can connect with less uh, features. Here we have paint and beneath the paint we have uh, metal, but you can make, for example, the painting uh, also metallic. Here I'm using uh, the noise to make it look smooth, but uh, you have a bump on the painting. You can have some, some dust. Here we have a rust. We can activate rust. You can uh, change the color of that rust. If you just activate the rust, it will make only the, the parts that are metal uh, get rusty. And if you add some progress, it will start uh, appearing everywhere. You can adjust the, the values here, the color, and everything. You also have a dens here. We can plug the inverted because this will be concav to the dens. And you will see uh, dam new damages here, for example. You can change the seed and scale and amount. If you exaggerate this, you will see there's a lot of them. We also have some uh, dust masks that we can plug here, dust mask. We plug this, and you can see this is using the ambient occlusion to add more dust on the occluded uh, parts. You can see here, here, inside, the parts are that are closer to other objects also. So you will find in different 
uh, objects, different things. Some are more simple, like let's try this one, for example. And we have a tint color, a scale for the texture, depending on the size of your object, it will be uh, different. And, and here we have a factor to make it a bit more darker. Here I'm using one of the new chocolate materials. You can see you have scale for the texture, the amount of this sort of bubbles that you, you see there. You can remove them completely, make it more visible, change the colors, scratches. Uh, you can see there. Okay. In this case, I wanted to talk about the materials that have displacement. This is something that most of you maybe already know, but some people, it's starting with Blender. Uh, struggle a bit. So you will see that some materials have a displacement uh, plugged in. And in order for this to work properly, we, we need, you can see I'm using here adaptive subdivision. I will explain this in a moment. But if we don't have that, you will see the, the material looks flat. If we have subdivisions, it will use the displacement. This is a feature that only works with cycles. If you use Eevee, it will use bump instead. So it still looks good but uh, you don't have actual displacement but if you're using uh, cycles i will explain you the best way to go is to select your plane or your object you have to use experimental feature you will also go to subdivisions and change this to one so you can see the actual result you add a subdivision modifier but you set it uh, to adaptive subdivision this will make the subdivisions depend on the distance from the camera so if you are closer, you have to always change this to render mode again. You will see more detail. Uh, you can adjust the gap. This will be a bit exaggerated uh, between the, the words. You can, this is the intensity of the tilt of the, if you make it stronger, you will see uh, they will be more exaggerated. And this is the amount of tiles that are affected by this if you set it to one it will be every single board so that's an important thing when you see displacement uh, we have other cases for example here we have the same case this is wool material and we have displacement as you can see plug if you use eevee we see this looks uh, much more flat because it has no displacement it's using just the bump but if you use cycles and you have a subdivided mesh, almost forgetting, but my, my materials already have it, but you go to the settings of the material and in the settings, you can select if you're using displacement or bump. So if for some case you want to use uh, cycles and don't use the displacement, you can change it here. But in any way, as you can see, we have also uh, adaptive subdivision. So you can see in the borders, we get this real displacement and the material looks uh, way better that way in this case we also have transparency to see through the the gap there and we can adjust as always different things we have the gap here as you can see our maximum size and we get this for the moment the only ones that use the displacement are the one the ones that uh, specifically needs a bit of displacement to look good so the wool and the wooden floors that you can see in the walls and floor here in this case but you can also use the bump version for the tune shaders there are some specific things that you need to know we we will use always eevee because they are based on a note that it's only uh, available for eevee we will adjust the world shader go to shading world the this is the background that it's affecting the light so i will set it to black i don't want any uh, light coming from uh, other sources than the light i will use a light path node another background a mix shader like like this and i will use the east camera right here on the factor and that way we can control the color of our background with this and if i go to render view this will affect the light so it's black or this in zero it won't affect and this will be our background that we can select a color for now we will go to our end panel the add-on and we will assign this this is like a bill uh, texture 
I will assign it and now I have to place my light. You can set the background to match a bit the the color of the of the texture there. For most cases, that's it. You just assign a different material. You have your settings there. In the case of the backlight, it's a bit different. We'll have to document everything here because uh, each each one has a bit of a different use. I will assign this. And the thing here is we use two different lights to create different uh, results. One picks only the red lights and the other, the other part uh, picks only the green lights. So we have to take one light, change here RGB, we leave it just red. I will delete this and I will copy this light, place it here and change this color to green. So now the backlight is this color here you see and it's affected only by this light and the red light will give it the shading on the the color here we can so as you can see now this this uh, this shading reacts to this light and this one to this light we have hand drawn And the last one that it's a bit different is this one. For this one, I will use a plane because it's easy with the UV. This this uses a, a UV map and a texture to change it to half tone. So I will assign this material. I'm using a, a demo image here. As you can see, it breaks it to uh, the half tone version of it. I'm using this image here. As you can see, it's a regular image. And here we can change the size of the texture. And this is the maximum size of the colors. When, when there's more of that color, the, the circles are uh, larger. So you can adjust that. The range of the shadow here. And the max size of that also. You can use this also on complex shapes. It has to be UV unwrapped and you have to, to have an image that match that UV. So you can use it on 3D shapes too. And then we have a rain shader, render view for this one because it uses HDRI. We assign the material. This is animated. It's not supposed to look super realistic uh, when it's still because it's just an animation. But uh, if you play it, you can see that gives a uh, an interesting look. You can mix this with uh, maybe a road you, you did and you want to add some spots with uh, rain or whatever. You can use this normal on, on another material if you want. You have to remember this here, it's the same I'm using here, but of course, if you put it on a flat surface with flat light and things like that, it will not look that good. So also the materials require a bit of, a bit of uh, shape and lighting to look good. And I think that's it. I will try to add the documentation as soon as possible. I'm working as fast as I can to also add materials. So uh, thank you for watching.